Hey everybody, Don here, the German 3D printing nerd. <laughs> and today we're going to take a look at this one. And what is it? An Anycubic Mega Zero. Hey, how's everybody doing? Sorry, but unfortunately, I cannot get OBS connected with this new bullshit from YouTube. And uh, how that's all it's going to work, I don't know. But anyway, I'm going to make a video. the easy way. <laughs> so, first off, <laughs> and uh, 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 56 dollars on customs. And any cubic said, I don't have to pay any customs. Uh, I don't know what the hell they were talking about, but uh, yeah. Fifty-six euros and ninety-nine cents. You know that's over a week for food and medication for me. That's a lot of money. And of course, customs waybill papers. Uh, sample of this is, this is uh, a lot of money. What are they writing on this? Non-DG, not restricted as per. Data Mega Zero 3D printer for printing metal 150 US dollars. That's around about 140 euros. Mm -hmm. Okay, you say it's that much. Then, of course, no wonder that uh, customs wants money from me. But that was really that was really cool, you know. At first, that guy came with this package. Told me, yeah, uh, Herr Burkholder, I get from you 56 euro and 99 cent. Yeah, Mr. Burkholder, I, I need from you six, 56 euros and 99 cent. And I was thinking, huh, what the hell? For that package of filament? No way, I ain't going to pay that. You know. And at that time, I didn't know there was two packages. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, I told him you can take that back. I'm going to contact D DHL Express and ask what the hell's going on. He took it. He went back. I contacted DHL. DHL said, "Oh, sorry about that. He was supposed to have two packages. Why he did not take both packages, we do not know." And I told him, "Well, it's fine." 10 days until the month's end. Can you hold the packages until the month's end? Because that little bit of money that I have right now, I need to live from. Yeah, okay, we can wait until the month's end and then we can deliver it. Yeah, so month's end and they delivered it. But, uh, you know, that's really strange. That is really strange. Of course, I do believe this is something that they had that they could have put in the package, but I'm not sure. Anyway, let's take a look and see what we got here. Any cubic filament. Nice. What is it? I hope it's a PLA. Yep, yeah, that's a PLA. And Nice, one kilo. Great. That's something that I can always use. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Where am I going to put this for now? 
So let's take a look and see what we got in here. First off, we've got a nice box. Oh, this, is, this looks really nice. Okay. That's going to be interesting. Styrofoam. And then you get right into FQC Pass. <laughs> Federal Quality Control. Okay. This is the handbook for it. No. Oh. Building process. Okay. That's interesting. Well, let's see what we can find in here. Okay, it looks like I'm going to have to build some stuff here. See how this looks. There's the first package. There's a couple of more that are extra. Here, got a bag full of stuff. Tools. Looks like we got some nice cutters. USB cable. Oh, what is this blue? That's not a TFTE tube. Where is it? No. Huh? Okay. Sample TLA. And we got a lot of screws. After sale service card. Okay. USB with SD. Okay. This is a N switch. There's the SD card. Here are some tools. Oh, it looks like it's a nice set of cutters in here. That's something that one how has to learn to put some cutters with every printer. Yeah. USB to micro USB. Okay. That's going to be an lesson. Or that PLA. Okay. Ah. I can go into my sample box. I'm not even sure if that PLA is enough to print anything. European power cord. Very nice. Oh, I'm talking about power? Well, now uh, let's just take a look here. There is no way. Oh, this is only this is only the controller. Oh, wait a One second. Oh man, this one is fine. Uh, 
Oh, this looks really cool. Okay. That looks like we got the bottom frame. <laughs> There we have. That's a 2040. That is. Ah, it's a B slot. Okay. At least it looks like a B slot because it is cut at an angle. Those for what we need for. So now I hope the audio is okay, as I do see a lot of LED lights lighting up. And uh, <coughs> uh, let's take a look here. The motor is already there. Looks like injection molded parts holding LMU bearings. Got some nice wheels on here. But, uh, all in all, that looks okay. Well, looks like it's a sturdy frame, too. Check the bed. In the book, it says it's uh, 220 by 220 by 200, and I think it was 30 from the print area. The bed is 230 by 230. No, there's no detect information here. It's only telling you how to put it together. But the data sheet is not there. That's what I would be really interested in is seeing what's inside here. But you got on the side, you got the on off switch, power input. Okay, there is a brick. That's nice. How much can this brick handle? There's my reading glasses. Oh man. Okay, AC DC adapter. 110 to 240 in. 2 amps. 12 volt at 6 amps. Okay. Interesting power brick. I hope it doesn't get too hot. <laughs> That's cool. Oh, what do we have see here? Okay. Nope, that's not sharp. I do not know why. There's a plastic bag. Oh. 
then we have the spool holder for it. That looks okay. Okay, this has got to be for the for the X carriage. I would say, and this little pancake thing is for the is for the extruder. Okay, here's here's something really interesting. I don't know what this is supposed to be, but it looks like it's supposed to be some type of extruder gear for that with a short PFTE tube. Now, this is really going to be interesting. Especially when you see how this is supposed to be put together. That's really going to be nice. Okay, let's stop. Just looking and start working. This is the top X rail. And here's our lead screw and see lead screw only one one thing I do not like is a printer that only has one lead screw on it Now this is really going to be an interesting setup. It was already on. The extruder is already mounted. Here is some PFT tube. Looks like the extruder goes over here. That would be on the back side. Well, anything else in here? No. So now, let's take a better look at what we have here. Okay.
Install the aluminum beams to base. M5 by 45. M5 25. M3. M4. And five by forty five. So now, yeah, I'm really sorry that I have to do this as a normal video. I wanted to go live, but uh, at YouTube Studio got it all set up and everything. You might have seen. But uh, for some reason, it would not accept OBS. I don't know why. I even tried putting in a new key and everything that was already being shown. Replace the key, replace the URL. Yeah. No more lock washers? Oh, that's a mess. Three of them have a lock washer on it. There's one, two, three, four inside the bag. One, two, three, four. I'm just looking to see if I can find any extras. Oh, that's a nice set of covers. And I must say, okay, Allen keys, they look all right. Ball endings on it. Not too bad. But what the heck is this supposed to be? What kind of cheap wrenches are these here? Yeah, I don't believe this. They put something like that willingly in a bag. In, 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 ah. Five washer, lock washer. Let me see if I have one. Uh, uh, okay, I wonder if this one goes to M four. Maybe I'm lucky enough today. Or maybe not. It must be an M4. I want to use these. Uh, 
let's put the let's, let's put the beams on. Better to use this one. Otherwise, I might have a problem trying to put on. First one. Now I'll put on the second one. Okay, we have both of those beams on. Now, I have to put on that one. How do they want it? Okay. Socket going to the back. Set screws must be screwed into the flat surface of the. Uh huh, yeah. Okay. I don't need that yet. I need to know which screws do you want me to use there for the motor. Hmm? 
Oh, M4 by 25. M438, M5, by 6, M4 by 16, M5 by 25. Ah, M4 by 25. Okay. Here we go. M4 by 25, two pieces. Let's do the second one. What I am really wondering right now, when I'm looking at it, is why is there no protection cover on this bed? Talking about the bed, it doesn't even have a heated bed. That's going to be interesting. And you're going to have a lot of fun printing on oh, that. I don't believe this. I do not believe this. OMG. Oh my god.
I'm checking the lead screw right now. I'm not sure if you can see it in camera, but I can see it right here. This is going to be fun. This couple of these lines will be changed. The red couple is okay without this joint in it, but what I see here, I don't believe this. That lead screw is bent. How that thing can get bent, I do not know. But, yeah. Okay, that's on, that's on. That's my
I might be building this a little bit slower compared to others that build something like this, but you know, I gotta be careful with some of this stuff. This is the extruder. Now this is really interesting. Here's a here's a stop switch. It doesn't even have any cables on it. But I mean, like you can see here. Yeah, this is the Z. And the Z looks like it's gonna be placed here somewhere. Because ah, that's mounted here. So that means the Z is going to go here. This is the Y. There's the Y motor. Here's in there. Looks like that cable is way too short. Huh. Well, how else are you supposed to? This is the line. One hand, and it's okay. <laughs> Don't believe this. Oh man, M5 by 6.
C on F. Uh -huh. Well, let's go by the book. Okay. Uh, Next one. Talking about losing them. They are already loose. I'm sure I'm supposed to type. <laughs> Clockwise. Yeah. Tighten them lightly. And to screw out the two set screws on the coupler, that's the one. And so I can do some more to tighten two set screws. So I got that done. Installing X and we Yeah, let's see. In. Turn the coupler to lower the X motor by eight eight centimeters. Okay. It's probably ten or twelve centimeters, but uh, pay attention to the relative position of the U type hole and screw. Ah, this is for the stop switch. M4 by 16. Aha! This is getting really interesting. I could have fallen down. Supposed to be some type of holes in there or what? That is a hole here. Now, wait a minute. What the heck are you showing me here? It's also supposed to be on the outside. And it's supposed to be there where the motor is. Okay. That means I'm going to take you off. You off. Yeah, no, no, no. Begin this mistake.
just to make sure, let me take a look at this again. Pay attention to the rel relative position of the U-type holes and the screws on the Z-cylinder switch to allow future adjustment. This is okay. But... There is no good picture Other connections. Why other connections? Okay. <laughs> That's how it looks. I'm going to need this one too. Yeah, I know it's quiet right now, but I'm trying to concentrate on what I'm doing.
So now I have those two holes on the outside, <laughs> where they're supposed to be, which was not explained correctly. The position. something else I'm going to have to talk about when I contact them with my report. Yeah, talking about a report. Uh, I have a email with a document attached from any cubic asking me to fill it out. I think there's going to be a lot of questions on there. We'll see. This Allen wrench is kind of ah, nay. This is the last piece of shit for Allen wrenches. And all other wrenches I'll use my own in the future. Is this the right size? Extruders pointing down. Why am I twisting my tongue now? Four by sixteen. You're talking about, yeah. And four by sixteen.
ये ये Okay. That is set. So. going to tell me to put on a top beam. Okay. Sometime soon. So. Five by twenty-five. And five by twenty-five. Five by twenty-five with washer. And as we can see now, it's starting to look like a printer. Okay. Almost to that point. Yeah, why not? It's nice that they have put a spool over with it. Sixteen for the spool holder too. Yeah. Spool holder seventy nine and four by sixteen.
extruder. So, <coughs> strange extruder, strange. <laughs> Looks like a B and key form or whatever, but uh, cheap Chinese imitation. I would say. Ah, now I know where these have to go without even a look at the manual. I can tell you right now.
So as you can see, it's put together. <laughs> Last egg is empty. And put all that back to the end there. Now we're going to have to do a little bit of wiring. Let's see how we can get all these sockets connected. Package, package was 12 to 14 kilos, something like that. Oh yes, okay. Now the X motor. This is the extruder. And now, this is the Z switch. Colors doesn't make any difference. Just make sure oh, my. Okay. Just Let's see right now. Oh, yeah. Okay. This one must be. It is. The Z motor. Looks like this has to go over the top because if you try to put it underneath, you have a problem with that, you know, the cable is too short. Right here for the end stop. Um... 
Well, one thing's for sure, we do have enough cable. Now let's see. One second. Let me see what I can do here for power. Oh, and this next part. There it is. <laughs> Everybody ready? Let's. That's fast. Mega zero. say this one runs up and gets ready a lot faster than my one how d9 that's for sure what do we have for menu ah good prepare main move access home disabled steppers pre PLA okay we only have preheat PLA. Doesn't have preheat ABS or preheat anything else. But it's saying it can print PLA PET G and now what was it again? Something else that I read. But anyway, ah, control main. Okay. You're wondering what I'm looking for right now. 
you know. Maybe you can tell me what I am missing here. I'm gonna miss over there. I'm doing a home Z right now. Shouldn't have any problems. I have this all the way up. But what I can't understand is the wheel that's going to be hitting it. Not any type of tab or anything. Okay, that seems to work. <laughs> this will be strange. That is really strange. The nozzle is way outside the bed. After holding the nozzle, it's too much lower than the platform. You go four nuts underneath to fully tighten. After holding, okay, that looks already done. I don't want that thing to set so I can't hit the bed. Prepare to eat on our Prepare the new axis. Prepare the new axis.
it. That is all we have. Hmm. Kind of take a little look here. All the way down. Oh, I don't believe this. As you can see, you also have to go through and do a leveling control two times at least. Make 
sure that you get right. And this is a piece of 80 pound, normally 8 foot letter paper that I'm using here. to the front, check the front one more time. Okay. There. Let's go ahead and put screen first. So let's check the SD card, see what we have on here. The wind nozzle gene code, whatever that's supposed to be. I don't know where the hell you can go on. I wanted to see how hot.
Okay. Looks like you can do two fifty in height. Here they are. Thought I had a silicone shoe for that naked heating heating element where I could say, okay, heat it up and it won't have any problems because it'll be standing in temperature. But as you can see, I don't have one. So what we're gonna do now. Sales service card, technical support, YouTube channel. Hmm. Now that's an interesting one. Normal SD card reader. Mini SD SD card reader. <laughs> That's something that somebody could always use. But now, I'm going to try and print something. Catch you later on part two of this video. So, hey there, we're back, <clears throat> part two, with the Anycube Mega Zero. <laughs> so, I've already heated up the nozzle up to 210, and instead of opening up for just a test part or whatever, you know, a new roll of filament. I got one of my rolls of filament that I already have open. 
and have been using PLA and uh, I'll put that in and on the SD card I already checked it I installed the oh man really interesting any cubic is almost up to date with uh, Cura they have which version is it now do, 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 do. one second let me take another look that was Ultimaker. Uh, da, 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 da. Come on, where are you now? Ultimaker Cura 4.2.1. <laughs> One, how you need to learn something. I mean, last year when you sent me the One How D9. That thing had a 1.8 version of Cura on it. I mean, you guys got to keep up to date and with the Cura. And that's something that any cubic does, I must say. Anyway, I've got the mouse I heated up to 210. Got the SD card in it. Let's see here. Let's say print from SD card. Refresh. Drivers no. Oh, and I know what this wind nozzle is. That's a new nozzle for here one for here under. Oh. Oh, and uh, one thing, I mean, you know, it's cool that uh, tweezers are being included as a utility tool and a spatula. But uh, do you expect someone to grab some filament from the nozzle with their fingers? Uh-uh. -uh. Safety first. Use a pair of tweezers. I mean, if you guys don't, uh, you don't have any tweezers, well, that's a bad sign. That's nice. That's not nice. Ah, okay. Hmm. That looks cool. Let me turn over a little bit. And so that thing did a first. Looked really nice. Okay, I got you more on this one instead of instead of on me. I'm talking about first layer format. That's really cool. I mean, you know, this is already a uh, prefabricated G code from any from any Cubic, you know, from their experts. I'm no expert, 
But uh, one thing's for sure, when this is finished, I will be doing a couple of other prints to see uh, when I slice it up and say print, let's, let me see what it can do with them. Even a second layer looks pretty damn good, I must say. And just like uh, Chris at Near East does, I will also uh, do a base in base mode to see how that will come out on this one. So you can be sure I'm going to be testing this and printing with it for the next couple of weeks non-stop just to see what it can do. with PLA. But this bed is really interesting. It's a metal it's a metal plate. It has some kind of a rough coating coating on it. I'm not sure what that's supposed to be. I mean it's even a little bit rougher than for example, the build tack. Well, it looks like this is uh, put right on. And uh, Wham Bam has asked me to measure the bed on this one. Send them a picture and send them a uh, put the mic a little bit out of the way here. You can I think you can still hear me. Uh, but Wham Bam wants me to make to take a picture of this and um, send them the exact measurements of the bed. I think we can say that uh, that's a company that wants to be really up to date with the printers. Uh, so temperature on the nozzle is 190 cold ground on it. Looks like that's hot enough because filament is coming out. Normally on my 1HD9 I have uh, about 210, 215 on on that nozzle for PLA. Okay, we all know that. <laughs> Let me zoom back out here so that you can see me. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. You all know that uh, that print's going to take a couple of hours. <laughs> so I think I will come back with another video after I make more prints from it. But, uh, yeah, too bad that it doesn't have a heated bed. 
That's one thing that it should have. But to put a heated bed on that one, that's um, too much work and too much work, too much time where the printer is down because you're going to have to take it apart. You're going to have to find some place to mount a MOSFET. And then you need a heating bed on it that is uh, for direct 220 volts and not 24. I don't know. I mean, it is interesting little printer. Uh, so, no more to recap. Print bed is 225 by 225 by 250. Okay. I double checked the height. I had the X, uh, X rail all the way up as high as it could go. And then down a little bit, and then it was at 250. So still not room for the PFT E2, I think. But just to be on the safe side, I would say don't try printing higher than 230, let's say. It does not have a heat bed on it. has a standard software, standard display, it's kind of touch screen. We have a extra power brick, so we don't have a power supply on this. And of course, you have right here on the side, you have your SD card, mini USB, on off switch, and power connection. But that extruder that's on there, hmm. I mean, it's, it's formed. It's formed like a BNG or something, like BNG or whatever it is. But uh, it is not dual gear. I'll say again, it is not dual geared. So, <laughs> something maybe for improvement later on. All depends on what you want to do with it. And the price for this printer, from what I've seen on a couple of pages, it's supposed to be somewhere around 199 US dollars. Can I say it's worth the can I say it's worth the money? I don't know yet. That's uh, something that I do not want to say right now. I mean, the thing is well built. You got a 40-40 frame running from front to back. You have a 20-40 on the bottom running from left to right, front and back. 20-40 frame coming up. And then a simple 2020 on up here, uh, 2020 up here, and a 2020 down here for the Y. 
It has a single Z screw. How that's going to react when you know when you're printing something and it's going up with this side here, I don't know. This is the first printer that I have that only has one Z screw on it. The one how I3 that I had to begin with from 2015 to 2017, 2018. That only had a uh, dual Z. One out D9, dual Z. But, whoops, interesting. Whoops, interesting. I can see right now a couple of layers. I see a small crack in the front right, the front left corner, back right corner, front right corner. And I'm not sure if that's something that has to do with the model or what it is. I have to wait and see when it's finished. But control, temperature. Just to make sure, I'm going up from two, 190 to 205 with the temperature on the nozzle just to check and see how it reacts. <coughs> because I've never printed PLA with 190. Looks like the G code is set up so that it is printing the walls from inside to outside, which is good. And it looks like it's only printing with 10% infill. So it'll save a little bit of filament. <laughs> but anyway, until the next time, I think in about a week. I'll be able to show some prints, give you some final thoughts on this printer. But you already know a couple of things that I think about it. <laughs> Until the next time, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, leave a comment down below what you think. And take a look at the description. I've got a resin printer coming around the 10th or 11th of February. Which one that is, from which company that is, I uh, don't want to say right now. I'm not, I'm not even sure if it's going to be that one, that model that they sent me or if it's going to be another one. I'm not sure, but um, we'll see. A link to my wish list in Amazon. There you can see a couple of items that I do need for resin printing and I can't buy them right now because <laughs> from the 220 euros that I have to live from 70 of them are going to the water company 
and I had to pay 55, uh, no, not 55, 56 euros and 99 cents, uh, so 57 euros for customs. So this is going to be a hard month for me if something doesn't happen. But anyway, until the next time, everybody, take care of yourself now.